News Talk 630, WMAL. Obviously, many of you in the advocacy business are interested in knowing what is going to be front and center, what perhaps you might be wanting to support, what you might want to be um, opposing, and that is really the purpose of our, uh, of our forum today. So, so let me begin. What we're going to do is we're going to start with a few questions. Uh, obviously, now that we know we are going to have a stimulus package where I'm going to be talking about the economy, health care, energy policy, many of the things that you're interested in. I'm going to start with a few questions for our, our panel, uh, ask them to engage, and then we're going to turn it over, over to you and get uh, your feeling too. Let me, let me start um, with a very basic question because um, the Obama administration is now about three weeks old. Uh, to some of you it may seem a lot longer than that. Um, only because obviously this was a very interesting transition in which it seemed as though uh, President Obama was actually in power before he actually assumed office. But all of that notwithstanding, I would like uh, all of our, our guests to begin by giving us a quick ex assessment of the new Obama presidency with particular attention to perhaps a particular high point and a particular low point. Um, in what has already been a very busy first three weeks. So, George, can we start with you? Sure. Give us your assessment of the presidency and high points and low points. I guess, I guess the way I would summarize it is to say that four weeks in, uh, President Obama is all in. I mean, he's put every single chip on the table only four weeks in. I mean, basically, you've got a, a $789 billion stimulus plan, even more important, more consequential, is what Secretary Geithner put on the table uh, just two days ago. And obviously, we saw the market reaction. That doesn't mean it's not going to work. But if those two plans don't work, and he said it, if those two plans don't work, his presidency is over. If they work, he sails to two terms in history. So I, I think that you really can't, I think, overstate the, the magnitude of this first four weeks, which means that all the normal things we would pay attention to in the beginning of a presidency matter a lot less. Was the Daschle loss a problem, relatively big problem? In other times, it would have been a huge problem. But it, mm -hmm. given what he's facing now, it's less uh, uh, of an issue. I think that going forward, he's going to have to worry a little bit about becoming, uh, and Peggy Noonan noted this the other day, uh, becoming a little bit too ubiquitous. Um, Interesting point. But, but I think that... It's hard to uh, be overexposed after four eight, weeks. Four but weeks. But I think that basically his, his whole presidency is about the economy. He knows it. And it's a, he, it, the ri it's a risk he had to take. As somebody who used to be, obviously, in the presidential advisor business, do you think this is a correct course for him? Do you, mean, do you think he's, he's essentially moving... Zero it? choice. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I think if he were a dictator, he probably would have done an even bigger stimulus package, mm -hmm. you know, more in the trillion or trillion two range uh, to ensure it. I think he probably would have. I think they're confused about what to do on the banks. Um, but but yeah, I think he's done everything he's had to do. OK, Jim, can we turn to you? Uh, yeah, he um, I, I agree with George uh, largely. I mean, he um, he really didn't have much choice here to, but to start off with these things, and that was clear even before he took office. Uh, I was a little surprised that he didn't do a little more to massage what the House came up with. <clears throat> it was it put him in a difficult spot, uh, one that they were able to rectify by working behind the scenes before the stimulus went to conference after it passed the Senate, because <clears throat> he was faced with the prospect not of being able to point to Republicans who had taken a different view, but having to choose, which he doesn't like to do very much, it would seem early on, to choose between Democrats in the Senate and Democrats in the House who had a pretty different view, I think it's fair to say, of what to do here. Mm -hmm. um, he did not work on that in the first instance, so you wound up with a House bill that many Senate Democrats, before it even passed the House, you had Kent Conrad, Ben Nelson, and others saying, look, I can't vote for that bill. I don't know why they are sending us a bill that spends so much money on programs that do not create jobs. And that is a fair debate to have, but these were Senate Democrats who were making, leave aside Republicans for a moment, who were making this argument. So it was clear the bill was going to change in the Senate, 
um, Mr. Obama and some of his aides got more involved, and they particularly got involved when you, you got to the conference level. Um, the President had people over at the White House in the morning, leadership from both houses. Uh, Rahm Emanuel and Peter Orzog from OMB were up on the Hill in the meetings, hammering out a deal so he would not be faced with the indelicate situation of having to argue between Senate Democrats and House Democrats. The um, Senator Schumer, for his part, got up and said, well, yeah, there's some porky things in here, as he put it, but nobody really cares about porky things. Well, the person who should care most about porky things is President Obama, mm -hmm. because he obviously has a very large agenda that he has in mind lots of policy initiatives beginning with uh, comprehensive health care reform that he wants to pursue. And once you have spent, I mean, we know how, how big a deficit we had in the last year, uh, now we're going to add another $800 billion or so to that, plus the $350 billion we know about on the second round of TARP, plus another round of TARP, and the President hasn't even submitted his own budget yet, which will also have deficit spending. So you've got all of that coming down the pike, and then you have to ask, when the President gets ready to do comprehensive health care reform and other major initiatives, is there going to be anything left in the well? And Good I think point. the answer is no. And it's going to be very, very difficult for him. If all of this works, and the economy is rejuvenated and begins to grow and revenues start to pick up, then there will be something. But he has the biggest risk of anyone that some of this money could be squandered. Well, all right. That, that, uh, uh, I, I want to get your take too, Leslie, but Jim brings up a point that I think is interesting. Has the President perhaps spent too much economic and political capital for the stimulus package to continue to move his agenda, which is uh, obviously very ambitious, even for somebody who comes in with a strong mandate? Yeah. I, th I think that's a, a great point. And I, I wrote a piece on CNN yesterday about the uh, uh, John Sh uh, Shadig, Shadig, I can never say he's right, actually pointed it out. There's one point. John one, Shadig, member of Congress from Arizona. Yeah, on the House side, a Republican. It basically pointed out there's $1.1 billion for comparative effectiveness. And that's one, it, in terms of health care, that's a measure that a, a lot of it, it raises a lot of alarms for conservatives, I'll tell you that, but it moves to a single payer system. Basically, the government's going to be deciding who gets health care, who, who's allowed those types of drugs. You know, it, it puts the government in that role. And, and the bigger question was, very much to this point, is where does that leave uh, Mr. Obama with respect to that health care discussion? If this is a major initiative on his part, see the only people, if you talk to the staffers on the Hill right now, they'll say, really, they're, they're surviving on coffee and raw nerves in trying to put that stimulus bill together. There's going to be things in there that n nobody really knows what's in there, and, and we've all seen those kind of bills in terms of reading it. But to the extent that it overreaches into health care and some of these other areas, I think there can be significant ramifications for associations and, and, and just the general public, period. Okay. Craig? I want to pick up on the overexposure question because I, I've been pondering that. You know, Calvin Coolidge once said President's words should be very used very sparingly mm -hmm. uh, lest they become discounted. Of course, he used his words so sparely, sparingly that the writer Dorothy Parker, when told that he died, said, how can you tell? <laughs> um, but Obama has pushed the panic button a lot. Uh, and, and I know he had to to get the stimulus package through. Um, but every day, we're hearing everything sucks, you know, from the, from the president. Uh, and, and at some point, and I assume now that this package is getting passed and they're going to start doing things and funding projects, he can get a little more to, you know, don't worry, be happy, and and, and up and uh, more uplifting, and get back to uh, you know the FDR, nothing had to fear but fear itself, which George Will on your program had a great line and said. His message is, is the only thing we have to fear is an insufficiency of fear. Uh, and I think that needs to change pretty quick. 